Hello, 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 my Parenting in the War tribe. This is me, Alicia, coming to you. Hopefully you're having a lovely day. The topic for today is one that is likely a hot take for me in terms of recording my impressions and likely it will be something that I will bring on um, other guests later on to talk about their own experiences. But I wanted to get on just because I'm in a reactionary mode um, today. And so to get into the topic, recently Kurt Franklin filmed, um, or I wouldn't say filmed, but he posted a documentary about his experience um, finding out about his birth father. It was a very moving documentary, relatively short, a little bit over 30 minutes, and I'll be sure to provide a link in the description. And within that documentary, um, the synopsis was that he believed a man was his father for most of his life um, and then information it came to light that um, shed a bit of doubt as to whether there was another person who was his father. So long story short, um, through a period of discovery, he was able to find that the individual he thought was his father was not and that his um, biological father was someone who did not even know he existed. And so it was very powerful and moving. Um, and recently my church, Alfred Street Baptist Church, held a um, discussion during their Come As You Are or Kaya service uh, for young adults or young-ish adults for those of us who are not quite in that stage anymore. And within that, they had a panel of gentlemen and it was essentially talking about fatherhood and various perspectives. And in particular, there was um, one father who essentially also talked about his experience of not knowing who his birth father is and how it has impacted his life and kind of um, the way he processes his own parenting journey and things along those lines. Um, what touched me was in particular a comment he made about how do you parent your child when you haven't had that type of parent, meaning for him, how do you be a father to your child when you yourself did not have a father? And for, for me, my experience was, um, and it stoked the similar question because my mother passed away when I was about eight years old. And so my early years with her are somewhat vague memories. Um, some things are a little bit more crystal clear than others. And of course she lives on in the memories of her siblings and um, others. And so I've been able to learn a lot about her but not having had that experience of her being alive and being a mother to me. And so over the years, I recognized growing up into adulthood, I was well taken care of by my um, surviving relatives and never wanted for anything. And so thankfully in a circumstance where you have such a profound loss as a child, I was able to have a relatively good childhood upbringing and experience of being surrounded by people who I knew and loved. So not similar in terms of not having um, a biological parent or finding out someone was a, was not my parent who um, and someone else ultimately was so that is not my experience but more the notion of how do we parent in instances where we have not been parented in that way how do I how do I perform as a mother to my daughter when I've not had a mother um, in the the absolute literal sense and so it has me uh, in a in a, a mood of contemplating um, my life and my experiences, my daughter is still relatively young, school aged, and so we are still going through our parenting journey. We are not in the before, we're not in the after, we're in the during, and so I sometimes struggle um, from day to day, thinking, "Am I doing this right? Am I being the mother that she needs? The mother that perhaps I want to be?" And again, what does that even mean? Is it that I'm thinking about that fantasy of what I think a mother is or should be? Are there things that are dictated by social media or dictated by the external experiences of what I've seen other friends or others um, experiencing with their own parents? Is that where I'm pulling my mothering lessons? 
or am I being the uh, Virgo that I can be and devouring all the books and social media posts and all the things that tell you these are the signs that you're doing it right and then you recognize hmm, that list of let's say five to ten things I might be doing too does that mean I'm a terrible parent and the answer of course as we know is no it is a journey for all of us, even for people who have had their parents there and present in their lives. Once you have someone in this world that you're responsible for, the journey is going to look different. It will never look the same as your parents, your friends' parents, anyone else. It is a unique individual experience just given the fact that your child is unique and being all of on their own. And so with that being said, sometimes we still dig in with the questions around parenting and the rightness of it and the wrongness of it and, and all of that. And I have continued to come to the realization that for children, it's not a right or wrong prospect. If you are there, you're showing love, you're showing nurturing support, you're listening, you're communicating with them showing them that they are worth something just by virtue of who they are, not what they do or achieve or give you or take, but just literally who they are. For many children who go on to obviously be adults, that's the defining moment for them of when they look back and they reflect on their lives, they don't say, wow, my mom did not cook every day. Bad mom. My mom did not uh, get me into five different types of activities. Bad mom. Or my dad did not show up to every football game I had. Bad dad. That's not generally what people are recognizing. What they want to know is when it matters, were you there? Did you hear them? Did you see them? Did you support, encourage them? These are the things that generally matter for children. But for us, especially in this age of social media and technology where um, knowledge is right at our fingertips, we really do struggle with am i doing it right and i keep using that word right because for all for us it usually is a zero-sum game um and often it's such black and whites that we don't think about the shades of gray and that's a disservice to most of us as parents and i think for many of us um, if we're honest some of the things that keep us up at night are things that our children probably will not remember having ever happened and yet we still break ourselves over the coals and so I continue to grapple with that notion of how do I parent when I wasn't parented in the mother sense. Yes, having family members who took care of me and all of that, still different from a mother's love, still just as important, still helped me to be the person I am today, but not quite the same as a day-to-day -day mother role that I imagine my mom may have played. It doesn't keep me up at night now, but I still look at the things I do for and with my daughter. Some days, if I'm being honest, I make value judgments around whether I think I'm doing it well or not. Um, the funny thing is though, on some of those days when I bring up something and I just ask her, she's like, oh, hmm, it's okay. And I'm thinking, wow, I was just ready to um, take out the little whipping post and, and get to it. And it just, it literally meant nothing to her. Um, so that helps me in recognizing that she sees me for who I am, not what I do for her, but because I'm her mom and I'm present and I'm active and I'm vocal and encouraging and nurturing and supporting and all the words I've used already. So for my fellow parents out there who have lost a central maternal or paternal figure in your life and you may not have had the ability to see up close and personal those relationships and how they played out. Um, I encourage you because it is a journey. We all want to get it done well. I won't use the word right here. Um, we will always question ourselves, but I think at the end of the day, the recognition is, is that if you're trying, that's the most important thing trying to be better than you were yesterday for your child today and for your child tomorrow. Um, no, it doesn't stop some of those doubts and worries that creep in, 
but I'm hopeful that all of us together as we grow in this community and we're open and honest about our lives and our experiences and our struggles, that we learn from other people, that we hear from those folks that may not know the blueprint, if there's such thing that even exists, um, but they know that they're creating their roadmap as they go and that they will be comfortable and satisfied with how far they get or don't get in this process, but just being an active partner and participant with your child or children is essentially the most important things. And so again, my encouragement, and I will link again to that uh, Kirk Franklin documentary, as well as to the Kaya service so that you can see it in its entirety. Um, I hope those things resonate with you, but we do have to think about what these models are in our minds. We have to think about, are they fantasy? Are they fiction? Are they somewhere in the middle? Um, are they things that are dictated by social media and what we think other people do or don't do? And again, questioning, are you doing the best that you can do in that moment, in that time, and letting the rest go? Children don't care how many things you buy them. Perhaps in the moment they seem to think they do, they don't. Children don't care about any of those things, but what they want to do and see and be is with you. So do the best you can, mamas and papas out there. I believe in you. I hope you believe in me. Um, we're in this together. I will come back to you in the future, but just want to give you those words of encouragement and just recognize that so many of us continuously grapple with and consider these aspects of life and parenting and trying to make sure we do them right. There is no right. Do them according to what works best for you and the children that you've been blessed with. Have a great day. Thank you.